Hi guys, um, I wanted to make a quick video, oh, not so quick video, about how to interface an external um, big red e-stop button into Linux CNC within Classic Ladder so that um, everything's interconnected so when I hit the hit the e-stop um, power is removed from the machine so it's safely thrown into eSOP but then also when I run into an eSOP condition in the software it also kills the power and then the two eSTOPs are interfaced so that I cannot um, I cannot turn the machine back on until both eSTOPs are pulled out and I can only do the turn it on from within the software so I pull the physical eSTOP out first then I pull out the eSTOP on the Linux CNC and then I turn the machine on. So there's like a, a three step process which means that the machine is quite safe and if I have a software glitch or something goes wrong, the machine can still be safely turned off without harming anyone. And it's actually really, really easy to set up um, off the stock um, classic ladder little file which is loaded when you go into the step config or um, the Mesa card, I think PC, pick and place, sort of, whatever you name, whatever you call that thing. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I'll just go through this and explain how it works, and you guys can uh, follow along, and hopefully um, everyone can start using a decent e-stop and not relying on software to turn the thing off. So this is just how I do it, um, there might be better ways, but I've been looking for a while and haven't found anything that does it quite like this. I think some people are doing it like this, but I couldn't understand how they did it so until I worked it out myself. So yeah, um, as you can see, you'll need two double pole, double throw relays, um, plus you can add more if you need to. Um, so in a nutshell, you open up the stepper configurator or the PN kind of wizard um, go through the whole thing when you get to the end of it select include classic ladder um, this is slightly out of place because um, you have to do the IO tabs first but anyway you go to carry on go through the drop down menus and make sure you select the e-stop ladder program um, go through the rest of the configurators, all the screens, set all your step and direction stuff up and do all that normal stuff that you have to do. Um, that's extra to this little video. Um, when you get to the I.O. tabs and the step configurator or um, PN conf, then you need to make um, input 1 as the external e-stop. Just select it from the drop-down list. And then make output one as the GUI e stop. Um, yeah, that's it for this. So um, as far as the the hell lines, um, if you come down here, what happens is the configurators they throw uh, they they place an a, uh, a note in the a line in the hell file, and it's e stop out. So it's got a comment e stop out. Now what it does is it nets or it joins together two signals. It joins together e stop out and this physical pin here. Now this is just the first number one physical pin on the 7i76 inputs. Then if you come down, the only other change you need to make from the stock standard um, config file that comes out of the configurators is change, um, so it's got machine is on to this output, oops, okay, so what you need to do is you need to change this e-stop out, which is linked to the 7i76 output number one, uh, yeah, number one, or it's called zero, but it's, it starts counting from zero. So when you look at the card, it's the first one. Um, 
change that from net e-stop out to net machine is on. Um, that machine is on is the button which is toggled by F2 on the Axis or any of the other GUIs. So when you turn Linux CNC on on your GUI, that's the signal that gets toggled. I finally found it. So um, you go net machine is on to connect to HM2 under slash 5i25 dot zero dot seven i seven six dot zero dot zero dot output zero zero so that's the first file the first little piece you need to change now down under here um, under e stop is external or the external e stop um, you can see the two hash signal things these things so that's what it originally would have looked like um, you just need to change it to you just need to change the logic to inverted so just put a dash not on the end of it um, yeah that's all you need to change within Linux CNC it should just run straight out of the box now if you come down here to the oh, I'm just gonna get the birds okay so I'm just gonna explain my wiring diagram here so um as I say on the notes up above, my whole machine runs off the same common 24 volt power supply. Um, all the logic stuff and power to control the servos and all that kind of stuff pretty much runs off the same supply. So where this says 24 volts down here, um, unless like down here I tell you it's separate from the variable speed drive, if it says 24 volts it's just the same terminal on the positive side of the whatever power supply you use. Um, I didn't want to draw it with lines going all back to the same place because it's going to get messy. So um, yeah, this is how I've done it. So power comes from 24 volts, positive 24 volts. Comes through the big red switch, which you could wire a whole heap in series here if you wanted. But anyway, it goes through my big red button, which is normally closed. So there's power always going through here. Um, comes through this relay, which is the first one goes through the relay, switches it, and carries on to ground. So this button switches this relay. Now, on the output of the relay, on the switched contacts, on one side, there is, you can see you just wire power from positive 24 volts into one side, and the other side on this normally open relay is just, it just goes to the MESA external e-stop input, which is, um, the first input on the Mesa card, number one. And it's set in the software, obviously, to not. So there's the actual um, pin, the physical pin in the HAL file, which you'd type in. Um, Mesa cards switch, most of the Mesa cards, unless they've got a D on the end, they switch power from 24 volts to zero volts when it's input, and they switch um, power 24 volts out from the Mesa card and into zero volts for outputs. So you can see the opposite on this other side. So this is the machine on um, output, which is the first one on the Mesa card, 7i76 output, or your, or your parallel port or whatever you want. But um, anyway, 24 volts comes out of here, goes through the relay, which is normally open, carries on, um, down and through the main e-stop relay and carries on to zero volts. Now you can see I've just shown here an, an example of what you could wire up to this bottom relay here. Um, you can put a whole bunch of relays in parallel, make sure they're in parallel not in series. Um, series doesn't work I discovered. <laughs> but anyway, um, so in this case to connect power to the to throw the variable speed drive into e-stop, I just, on my variable speed drive, I've got a power removal terminal, which if there's even not 24 volts between those two terminals, then um, it throws into e-stop. So I just run 24 volts out of the variable speed drive, through the relay, come back down, and into the e-stop pin. The relay cuts power through there, it's just a switch, cuts power, and throws into e-stop mode. Once all this other logic up here and in Classic Ladder is all um, worked out, then that's what happens. So 
what's good about this circuit, which I like about it, um, is if you fire the external big button e-stop, it goes through and it cuts power to this main relay. That tells Linux CNC it's in e-stop mode, and that also tells, um, it also doesn't tell that anything, it's an output. It also goes through and physically cuts power to the main relay here. So regardless of what software says, we are going into e-stop mode. Now, if you do the other way and you click on the e-stop within Linux CNC and it's not a physical button, so like if there's an error in your G code or anything happens really um, within Linux CNC, there's all sorts of stuff that can happen, then this output goes through that relay regardless because it can get through because the C-stop's not toggled. Goes through here and switches the main relay and turns it off. Um, on the other way, um, if you power the thing up, that obviously has to be out to work completely and then um, the output off out of Linux CNC needs to be connected as well to work. So when you turn the machine on, that turning machine on pushes this output and turns it on. Um, yeah, that's a bit. Of, that's about it here. Um, but I'll go into the. Um, I'll go into. Okay, so I'm going to go through the step config, or actually the um, PNC config. Um, generator right now and I'll just show you exactly what you need to do on the screen in front of you so you can't get it wrong. Okay, so we're now looking at the main um, just at the desktop on Linux Mint with Linux CNC installed. Um, down the bottom here I've got the menu on Linux Mint. Debian's a bit different but it's all relatively the same. Excuse me. <coughs> um, down here I've got a whole bunch of options so you've got the step configure wizard thing you've got the pnconf wizard so I'll open up this pnconf wizard um, now you get to a main page here um, if you'd already been in you could modify your configuration but anyway we're just gonna create configuration there and the rest of it is all standard and we're going to go show advanced option pages, make sure that's ticked. And make sure you have a desktop shortcut and launcher and the rest of them. Um, anyway, so we'll go forward from here to the next page. Um, I'll just set this to Mills since I live in a metric world. Um, all this kind of stuff is just, this is all stuff you have to set up anyway. You can leave the recommended servo period on a thousand as it says right in the just there, it tells you that. Um, what else? Require homing for MDI running and pop up manual tool change prompt. I need that at the moment. Anyway, this is all extra stuff you don't need to know really for now. Um, if we carry on, there's just a bunch of options here. Just go through it, nothing matters. Um, make sure there's nothing clicked here unless you want it for whatever you're doing. Um, because we've got advanced options, it gives us this thing here. I'm not using it at the moment. Okay, we got to the Mesa card. So select your Mesa card. Um, select your 7i76 card, which is a 7i76 times 2 with only one being used. Um, you got a whole bunch of stuff here. So you've got to go accept component changes. That loads up the Mesa card. Um, now, just for the sake of it, um, I've got to actually set this up, set up the step genes, otherwise the um, the configurator fails me. So I'll just quickly go set this up. Actually, I'll pause the video while I set them up. Okay, I just set them up, which was actually on the connector 3, not 2. So, um, yeah, just set them up. That's fine. Now, in here, what you need to do is... Um, you need to make pin 0, which is actually pin 1 on the card, because it starts counting from 0. So make sure you get this right. Um, go into external control and make it e-stop in. And then down this far side here, you've got pin 0, 0, which is pin 1. And use output. 
Um, same thing, go to control, e-stop out. That's it there. Um, I've got a calculator scale just for to satisfy the configurator because I'm only doing a dummy setup at the moment. Normally you'd go through and you'd put all your stuff in here and calculate it out and work it out. Okay, so down here, this is the most important bit. Make sure you select include classic ladder PLC. Select it, go down, select the e-stop ladder program. Um, you can edit it and you can you can check that it's actually what you're looking for. You can see there's a lube timer on this too, but um, we're just using the top bit at the moment. I'll close that. Um, yeah, make sure that's selected and this tick box, make sure it is selected so that you are including the connections to hell. Otherwise, life gets a lot harder suddenly. Um, go forward and it's going to overwrite your custom ladder program. Yes. Um, I skipped past this. Okay. We're good to go. Do you want to quit? Yes. That's all you need to do to set it up within the configurator. Now, if we go into my Linux CNC machine, which is the one I just made, that was the name I called it. If we go into that, um, okay, um, my phone just died, so I'm just getting back to it. So, um, if you open the configure the folder which um, the configurators make, which in this case is my Linux CNC machine, it's the stock standard default option. If you click on that, um, you get a bunch of bunch of options. Now you want to go to the my Linux CNC machine HAL file, the main file. If you open that up, um, I'm just going to put this on this side of the screen and put this on the other side okay so this is all you literally need to do if you go into it um, the first one is e-stop out which is right at ah, that's at the bottom okay so the tops up here there's a whole bunch of stuff um, here we are so right at the top you've got e-stop out just there now that's the same line I've copied and pasted into my PDF to show you guys what to do. So change that for me for me stop out. Um, change that to machine on. This is, this top line is only a comment just to make it easy for everyone to know what's happening. Machine dash is dash on. Now um, you can't use spaces and names in the hell file, which is why there's all the dashes and stuff. Anyway, make it machine is on, change net, which is connect, um, net means like connect two signals, net machine, machine dash is dash on, um, yep, make it that output there, so that's all it was, so Making, saying net to a signal like this, this is the first time I've used this signal. I'm actually creating the signal on the HAL file and joining it to this all in one shot. Um, now, the next bit is just here, right below it. This is all you need to change in the whole file. It's this easy. Go to e-stop um, external, change that. Um, all you need to do is at the end of this, you need to make it, instead of being a normal input, you need to make it the inverted um, copy of that input or whatever you want to call it. Just put not, um, dash not at the end. So that's all you need to do. And then um, if you go down here, the setup for external e-stop ladder program start um, and net e-stop out to IO control user enable out. This is all stuff which I had to work out, um, but it all gets made by default from the configurators, both step configurator and the pn con conf con uh, configurator, both generate this as stock standard. So set up for external ESOP ladder program start, and it's just joining a bunch of stuff to the inputs and outputs in classic ladder, which 
Then, um, so obviously e stop out, um, which is this one here, IO control, user enable out, that goes in there. E stop external, which is the pin I made up the top, obviously. Um, that's the that's the one I put the knot on. That goes into input number one for the external e stop. Um, the strobe is the reset button, just goes into request enable. Um, e stop out, classic ladder, goes to IO control enable in. And um, yeah, that's it. So I'll close this. Well, just downsize it. Ah, make sure you um, save it. So control S or um, save, save it. Let me just close all this. Uh, exit. Now, if I open up my Linux CNC machine, um, I'm just gonna share screens. I need to get me a bigger screen here. I'm using a small one at the moment. The next mission after this video is um, hook up the new Pro Basic GUI. I'm quite looking forward to that. The guys have done an absolutely awesome job and um, I'm very appreciative. We'll close that. So if I open up the ladder logic um, classic ladder file um, Okay, so this is the file itself. If you go into, so you can get to the file just by um, going file and letter editor. Now if I go to machine um, to show how configuration, it leaves me with a big window here, which if I click on watch rather than show, um, bring up some pins and I can watch them and see what's happening. So these floats um, are all internal pins to classic ladder. Um, you can use them within the program, but I don't think you can use them outside. Um, so input number one, uh, zero, which is number one, the first one, whatever you want to call it, and output, first output number zero, zero, yeah, number one. Um, now if we open up some manual pins on the HM25I25, just keep clicking the pluses. Finally you get into here and um, input zero is the e stop in and output zero is the e stop out. Okay, so currently everything's killed. I just push my e stop. Um, cool. So if you look at this, um, if I leave that So um, if I push in the big e-stop, it kills everything. Then if I pull it out, then enable the main e-stop, it resets the thing and we're ready to go. Um, so currently, if you look at this, if you look just down the bottom where my mouse is, the machine is off. It's currently not in e-stop mode, so I can click on it to e-stop. That's in e-stop mode. Um, down the bottom, kick it out. Okay, it's not in e-stop mode, but it's also currently not actually applying power. So this output here, when this output is shown as yellow, I'm actually um, controlling, I'm switching my e-stop relay and turning it, bringing it out of e-stop. In this case, turning it off, turning the e-stop relay off. So um, if I click power, um, just in case we'll turn all that stuff down because this is a test config and my machine might take off but shouldn't okay it didn't so you can see the machine's powered up um if i turn it off with the within linux cnc you can see linux cnc physically toggles that e-stop which is exactly what we want I still haven't pushed in the big button e-stop, but Linux CNC has by itself thrown it into e-stop. So just to give you an example of why you want that to happen, if Linux CNC glitches and doesn't work, um, I want, so I'm going to go down to my machine, I won't show you on the screen, but um, 
I'm going to push the a limit, a close limit switch and just trigger it now like the machine's going out of limits and I'll show you what happens. Oh, that didn't work, I think, because we're not honed. Um, I don't really want to play with this too much because um, it might take off on me. I'm actually going to close this. I'm just a bit cagey about this whole machine currently set up like this. So I open my proper configurator, I mean proper config. Okay, so this one here, I'm happy and happy that this is a, a nice uh, safe configuration. I'm not going to crash my machine with this. This runs parts fine and works. Okay, so we'll open up um, the show how configuration again. Open up that window, uh, go to pins, classic ladder, zero, go down to input zero and output zero, go back up to HN25I25, zero, zero, oh, not that one, 7976, zero, do you see some pins? Ah, oh, there we are. So input and output. Actually, I've we are not actually connected into the input. We've put NOS at the end, so we're connected to this one. So that's why that input there shows is true. It's not actually, um, I would delete it if I could, but I don't know how, so we'll just leave it. <laughs> okay, I think you have to close the whole thing to delete that. Um, so if I push the e-stop, if I uh, get out of there, I'll just bring up the ladder editor as well. Um, this video is going to be long and just uh, skip it if you don't really need to know this, just skip it. That's what I do with everyone else. Okay, so you can see right now the whole ladder logic e-stop chain is all live. If I push in the external e-stop, it kills power to all my external e-stops, which incidentally, you can see that's input one, input one, input one, and Q is, um, oh, that's input one, it's actually input two, that's input one there, one I zero. And then Q0 is output, the first output, and then you can see where it is through here. So anyway, I've killed that, there's no power. Um, if I pull it out, enable the axis e-stop out, and then push power on, you can see it powers up the machine. Kill it, and it doesn't. Or vice versa, kill it. And doesn't. Um, yeah, that's about it. I don't know how long this video is, but it's probably going to be half an hour. Um, yeah, enjoy. Oh, actually, one last thing I'll do. I'll take you guys around the back of my machine and just show you the relays I've got set up so you can sort of get a rough idea of how it actually works on a physical machine. So I'll just pause this. Okay, so here's the actual machine which I'm retrofitting. Um, as you can see, it's rather important that we get this e-stop right because um, this will kill me quite happily if I'm in the way and I don't have an e-stop in there. So um, I'll just come in here. I admire the, the clamps holding everything together currently. Um, here's the machine. Okay. So just around the back here, here's my actual control panel. I've got a bunch of relays up the top. I've got all sorts of stuff in here. Um, there's my meanwhile power supplies. One does all the 24 volt normal stuff and the other one is solely there for the DC brake for the servo, for one servo. Um, there's my computer. Here's the Mesa card. Um, you can see don't look too close at the wire and I've still got to fix lots of it. But um, on the right hand side of the green um, uh, breaker divider thingy, that's all positive 24 volts. Left hand side is all negative 24 volts. Um, down here, 
I pulled out that bottom relay just so I could have a good look at it and watch it switching, which can be helpful. But um, those, so the right three relays are all my e-stop ones. The first one, um, that one just there, that one is the one which gets switched by the, um, it tells, it gets switched by the, it's the first one in my diagram, so it gets switched by the e-stop, the external big e-stop, and it tells Linux CNC it's in e-stop mode, and then Linux CNC also, one of the output goes through that relay and gets switched, and then goes through the, if, if the e-stop externally is switched, and then goes through the second lot of relays. Anyway, um, apart from that, um, if I can show you a photo, just focus this. Okay, you can see a diode in there. Now this is quite important. You need a flyback diode on, on all relays like this or they go in and blow up your Mesa card. Well, in my case, didn't blow it up, but yeah. All you need to do is put a diode across the coil of the of the relay. Nothing fancy, just a normal diode, but make sure you do that. Um, yeah, anyway, so that's uh, the back of my machine. Okay, I'm just going to show you guys how I power this thing up and then home it and then um, start cutting if I want. So, go down here, make sure, make sure that e stops out. Um, make sure that one's out, power the machine on, turns on the servos, click home all, and we'll look at my machine, you can see it homing against the switches down here, there's two switches, so there's a limit switch and a home switch. Normally, unless there's something really wrong, the limit switch never gets used. And it goes onto the limit switch, hits it fast, and then comes back slowly and latches on against it. Okay, that's good to go. Um, I would do the Linux NC logo, but that's a bit boring. We're going to... What are we going to do? Um... We'll do this. Oh, no such file. Lovely. Okay. Um, Fusion 360 G code files. What am I going to do? <laughs> we'll do this. Test for oil in my machine. Oh, that's not the right file. Uh, I'm going to pause this and find it. Well, since it's a CNC machine running on Linux, we're going to make the Linux Penguin. Um, hopefully everything runs fine. I'll just cut the feed rate down just in case. Insert tool 1 and click ready. I'll continue. Cool, machines. Now running. Anyway, you get the idea. At some stage, I'll make some better videos of actually cutting parts out.